the, the club. It was after hours we've been somewhere, and I was just thinking I couldn't really come up with a, an appropriate way to open and transition outside the club. So I was just thinking, are there any good default openers for that kind of situation? It's like two, three in the morning. People are coming out. The energy's a bit lower now. Now that they've finished their clubbing night, they're, you know, hanging around, maybe waiting for their friends. And there were a lot of clubs just like that, um, but I just couldn't come up with some kind of default opener and some interesting, you know, way to open and transition. Well, I mean, there's only um, a couple of options where they're going. They're either going home, they're either going to an after party, or they're looking for somewhere to go. So you could suggest, because you do this with the Bar de la Cris, uh, Bar de la Cris don't you? What is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it you say? Yeah, Have you ever been to the Bar de la Chris? Yeah, I, <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't really specifically have anything, um, you know, specific that I say. It's just more um, saying to them something like, hey, what are you doing now? Um, we've got an after party going on. Where is it? Bar de la Chris. you never been there? Oh, you love it. You know? Um, that sort of a thing, you know? Or uh, alternatively, most of the time I don't tell them where I'm going. I just sort of say, hey, you going to an after party? Where are we going? This way. You know, and I just take that hand and leave them. You know? Um, and however much they go, where is it? I go this way. Straight ahead, love. Uh, so they never actually know where I'm going. Um, yeah, and basically, I mean, I, I think you don't need to worry so much about exactly what you say. You know? It's more just um, the energy that you say it with and... Um, not coming from a place of needing, as rather coming from a place of wanting them to come, you know? Um, the, the biggest thing that most guys do is they come, especially at two or three in the morning, they stand outside clubs and they look very, very needy. You know, they're trying to pick up the scraps or whatnot, and they're absolutely desperate for any girl in any way, shape or form to sort of speak to them or come back with them or whatever. Well, the girls yeah, so need the vultures, don't girls, they? You know? So you want to do it from a place of authority and a place of, um, well, you know what, I'm going to this really cool after party. You're really lucky I'm inviting you. Would you like to come? Come on in. Does that make sense? Mm. So it's like the girls think they're see like it's like being a vulture. They don't want to see vultures. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a, um, an opener for that thing, all openers apply. Yeah? Okay. So you just have to strike up the conversation again. And then say, where are you going? Where's the after party? And they go, I don't know. And you go, I do. And for example, Chris says, the bar de la Chris. Where is it? This way. Simple as that. Do you understand that? Or yeah. Yeah. How many people we got on the line at the moment? Oh, I'm, I'm listening, guys. How are you going? You all right? Is that Jim? It is, yeah. Hi, Jim. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt when you were right in the middle of it. But no, no. I, I just it. heard a, a noise and it, it means someone else has joined us all. Yeah, yeah, that beat means somebody else has joined in. How you going, guys? Good, good. You? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I, I'm at work, so I may need to uh, to jump out if. if yeah, uh, jump in and out as much, much as, as you like want. Yeah. Jump in and out as much. Just like being in set, jump in and out as much as you want. Cool. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Jim, do you have any questions while we're waiting, hopefully, to get more people to join the conversation? Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Hi there, it's uh, Mac here. Ha hey, who's who's joined? It's Mac. It's Mac from Team BMS. Hi, mate. How are you going? You all right? Yeah, I'm very good. Is it Dexter speaking, is it? Or? Yeah, well, there's me and Chris online, and we've got a few others. Okay, cool, cool. I haven't done anything before. I don't know how this works, so uh, what do I need to do? Okay, j just take our lead. You'll, you'll get you'll get the uh, idea. All right, okay. Jim. Jim, you had a, you were going to ask a question? Sure, yeah, Mac. How are you going, Mac? I was just um, going to ask... Okay, you're... Um, uh, that thing. Now, in sort of more your social groups and extended social groups, um, obviously you want to come across as um, sort of sexual and fun and playful. How do you, I think in the past, I'm, you know, oftentimes that works well for me, other times I'm maybe a bit miscalibrated and come across as a bit too full on. Do you have any sort of uh, advice in, uh, in the tone you sort of set with that? You know, say it like a, a private party or something like that where it's, um, really fun and play without being, you know, sort of uh, burning yourself socially in that regard. Again, you need to uh, explain, like, the actual situation. Are you talking if there's a big group around, if you've isolated the girl? Uh, no, more, more than a big group. Like, just, just when you're getting started. So you go with some friends. So you're, 
you're just I like, you, just you mean just friend. vibing with everyone yeah. in general? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you can't be extra, t for example, if you want to be able to escalate quickly or do a lot of keynotes as you're going around, you need to be doing it with everyone, even the guys. Yeah. Even the guys, and it shows you're just a touchy-feely sort of guy, yeah? It's no good touching them after ten minutes, yeah? So if you isolate yeah. the girl, and then you start touching her, and she's like, well, he wasn't like that with the others, she's going to find it a bit creepy. Okay? And you can always build on that later. Yeah, you can always escalate with her more. But if you haven't done anything in the beginning with anybody, it's just going to seem that you've uh, sort of tried to, I, you know, like single her out. And women, women don't like that. They like to feel special, but when the time is right, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. If you do it with everyone, it's just the same thing. Yeah, it's just like, well, what the hell, you know? Vibe. Yeah, and it also it opens up the options of the room so everyone can be interested. Good point, good point. Yeah. And, and also, then you're confusing the women, because they don't know who you like, and they're like, hmm, let's uh, have a little cat fight about it, because all the women want to win the attention of the person who's being really popular in the room. Love the jealousy, love the jealousy. Oh, they love it. Do you, um, say you're in a bit further in, in conversation, you know, maybe with a smaller group, one or two girls, or, you know, just one girl, do you talk, you know, not in a, um, a sleazy way, but do you talk much about sex, or you just leave it sort of um, innuendos more? It's like, if you feel uncomfortable about talking about sex, they will. Yeah. If you bring it up naturally, matter-of-factly, they will as well. Do you think if you can bring it up naturally, matter-of-factly, it's better to be more direct on it or to more, you know, just keep it more sort of... Um, a little bit of both. Window. I'll first maybe mention it in a joke or a funny story about, you know, someone having sex. And then I might say it seriously, like, I might ask her opinion, what, you know, what do you think's better, this or this, you know, on a more, uh, sort of not-so-funny matter. Then I might bring it back to light-heartedness again, and Joe could be a bit ambiguous about it. And then, you know, you know, switch and swap, always do that. Because once they learn your patterns, this is more advanced stuff, patterns and stuff, and breaking moulds. But once they learn your patterns or your rhythms, they're going to get bored of you. You have to keep them guessing all the time. Keep them guessing. And the thing is, if you get them giggling, you're on a winner. People can laugh at your jokes, but when they're giggling, that's a different matter. They're like little girls giggling. So you're deliberately mixing it up and changing the tone. Oh, yeah. Regularly every... So you keep on their toes. Yeah, n even more, like, n it's not even every minute. It's like even seconds I'm mixing it up. Mm. So I could be yeah, pulling a frown while making a joke and so on. That's something I should look into, really, because, uh, yeah, I could see how sometimes I maybe keep the same tone for too long as work at the start. And, and it's and boring, it right? It gets boring if you do that. If you ever notice that someone that talks to you in the same way constantly, and it just goes on and on and on, <laughs> you want to change it, you know? You, you, and you can't, if you're a funny guy too long, you are the funny guy, and that's all you are. Hey, that guy's yeah. funny. Let's get him over for a laugh, and then when we're bored of him, we'll toss him off. Not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have been starting a bit in the Reading area. I'm a bit outside London, unfortunately. So, uh, but uh, I found a few local wings, and um, uh, we use the open. Uh, <laughs> which language do you think is the sexiest language? And uh, that's very, very good. I think. Yeah, it's good one. Uh, you know, yeah. they really like that, and uh, you can bust them if they say French, or oh, why not Italian, you know, or maybe German, and obviously it's good for laugh. <laughs> so, uh, no, I always yeah, like to put in I Welsh, Welsh is really good. That, <laughs> um, because I, I find transitioning a bit difficult. Well, can you hear me? Hello? Yep, I can hear you. Well, again, you need to, uh, you know, it's good to be the funny guy at the start, but then you've got to switch it a bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, I mean, uh, do you bring in already then, like, uh, displays of higher value, like these kind of, like, yeah, I've got a few things I actually formulated on paper as well, like stuff that, ha interesting stuff that happened to me, and, uh, you know, I, I wonder, I, I suppose I just have to be a bit more, a bit more talkative. Uh, is it too early to, to, uh, to, to tell something like that already then, in the first couple of minutes, to transition? Uh, I, I don't know. Really you don't, do it, you so. don't always, it's always good to calibrate, but you don't always yeah. need permission to lead, yeah? You right. should always be leading, so that means leading the conversation. So if you want to get onto quickly, finding out if she fits your criteria, you right. go ahead and you move into that. 
And women are okay. very quick to try and prove that they're the best. You must remember that it's about conviction. If you have more conviction than she has, she's going to believe you. If you if you have less, she's not going to believe you, and she's going to think it's a picky, corn, corny pickup line. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you just have to have more conviction. Be be sort of be more dominant. Lead with it. And I love the old Ross Jeffries one. I was using this was my first ever pickup line, believe it or not. Uh, read it on a newsletter by Ross Jeffries nearly 13 years ago, and it was. I've got you. He walked up to uh, you, you. Walk up to a girl and you say, um, "I've got an uncontrollable curiosity about you." But before I tell you what it is, has anyone ever told you you're a shining example of genetic genetic perfection? So what has that just done there? It's done a few things. Very curious, I'd say. Yeah. It's also held that, so she's going to ask, what's a curious thing? But first she's got another question to answer, hasn't she? Because you asked her, has anyone ever told you you're a shining example of genetic perfection? You didn't say she was. You just asked if anyone's ever told her that. Now, some girls will say thank you, because they'll take it as you're saying that to them. And then you, I repeat the question, but has anyone ever told you? And some will just say, no, they haven't. No, I haven't. And you go, well, I have now. And, and then you can lead them away. You can say, come over here and I'll tell you about that curious intuition I have about you. And then you can say anything you want. You can do a cold read or whatnot. But remember, we're trying to do level one stuff here. We're not trying to do advanced, uh, direct, super direct game and stuff like that. Just sticking to the, the nitty gritty, the basics. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Maggie, do you want to say any more? Um, uh, I'm not sure really. Uh, I had a day two on Sunday, and uh, I I was actually going to tell you about it quickly. I don't know. Uh, is it okay? Yep, go for it. Okay, go for it. Uh, okay. I basically, I had this girl I met at a, a hiking group, so uh, I definitely employed some PUI techniques. There. You know, I was dancing with her. I was showing social proof at a party and uh, I think she responded favorably. Other girls were a bit over me as well, so that kind of like uh, uh, made her attracted to me, I believe. And, uh, I, and then danced with her and I said, okay, I'm trying so hard not to kiss you right now. And if, if, if these people weren't around, I would still kiss you. And it really worked. So I made out with her and a bit of time has passed because she was on holidays and she came back and we met out this Sunday in London and it went all right, but the thing is, I was really late on the day two. I was like 40 minutes late, and she still waited for me. Uh, but the whole thing kind of like uh, set me in a nervous state. I was like, oh shit, you know, she's going to think I'm a low value guy because I let her wait. It was um, close to the aquarium, you know, the London Eye. Yeah, uh, 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 make a comment there, buddy. Sorry, it's good. Can I make, jump in and make a comment? Yeah. Um, have you ever watched the film um, Shorty? Uh, not sure, actually. I don't think so. Okay, there's a film. Have you ever seen the film Be Cool with John Travolta and um, in it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. Um, there's a bit with it when Danny DeVito is bumped into somebody, right? And he's coming out and he's really late for something. And they make a comment how he's really, really late. And he turns around and he says something that's really... Um, worth mentioning right here he says if you're important enough they'll wait and that's the thing so you were late for her but she waited why because you were important enough right yeah. but it's only in your head that you weren't important enough for her to wait for you does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. in fact the fact that you were late doesn't put you as low value it puts you as higher value right because she waited for you you didn't wait for her yeah 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 I was, I got that impression a bit as well, you know, I was quite glad that she was still there, so I thought, okay, you know, she, she actually waits for me, that's a good sign. And it, it went kind of all right, I was doing a bit of keno, and I, I was, you know, doing a few DHV routines, and, uh, but I was a little bit afraid to kiss closer again, which was really silly, because I made out with her already. <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, basically I drove her home, and then I texted her on the way back, and, yeah, she was still up for it. She said, like, oh, yeah, let's meet up again. So I think it's still on. But, uh, 
I don't know really. I was just a bit worried that I, I should have kissed closer again, and I didn't do that because I was still in the back of my mind a bit kind of like not my alpha male self, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it still seems to be on, hopefully. So I'm going to see her in January when she's back from holidays. Um, but uh, I don't know really what the question was. I was just actually wanted to tell you about that to see what your opinions were. I think less worrying and more believing in yourself is what's needed there. More confidence, huh? It's, it's not even about confidence, it's just you believing in yourself. Right, okay, cool. You know? If you're putting building blocks in front of you, it's going to make the pickup harder. Uh-huh. So you're just making it more complicated. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Okay. Okay. But it's good, okay. you're doing well. Uh, on the level one, we started talking about the I love me list, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you started doing that yet? I do it yeah, uh, yeah, no. every morning, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, who, who was it that asked the question that was talking about the day two? Uh, Maggie, that's you. Um, well, I think there wasn't really a question. I think it, yeah, it was more confident. Right. It was for you my question. Have you started doing the I love me list? No, I haven't actually. I wanted to. Right. I, I know that you have uh, set it on the seminar and I will definitely start doing it. Cool. I also wanted to, <coughs> yeah, to write down a person profile and what's good about I don't, know who I don't know who your team leader and your buddy are. Right, but if they're on the call right now, I want you to hold him accountable to start to writing his I love me list. Okay? When you get off the call today, I want you to write down 10 things that you love about yourself. Put it up in the mirror in your bathroom and every day add at least one thing to it. Okay? Okay. What it is that you need is, like Bex just said, you need to believe in yourself. You need to understand how truly awesome and amazing you actually are. Right? There are so many wonderful qualities about you, from the small things to the absolutely enormous. And you need to start to see them in yourself the way that other people can. Right? Yeah. Once you start to see that in yourself, you'll no longer ever question whether you're high or low value. You will know how high value you are. Right? Yeah. Uh, you'll start to see yourself as a king. The king never, never is um, upset about making his servants wait. Right? Why? Because he's the king and he knows he's the king. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when you truly start to realize that you are the king here, you won't actually have any problem about um, insecurities like that. So believe Now, I'm not saying to be rude to people and have people wait for you all the time and left, right and center or anything like that. I think manners are very, very important. Right? Um, and at the same time, what you described on your day two, it was... The biggest challenge you have were all about your own belief, your own mindset, how you valued yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, so the best way to start to overcome that is to start to value yourself higher by actually making a list of all the good things about yourself. That makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, so whoever your team leader and your buddy are, I want you to make sure that they hold you accountable. Uh, is your team, who's your team leader? That'll be me, I'm on, so I will. Right, you're on the call, perfect. Yeah. So I want you to hold him accountable. Okay, good stuff, right? Good stuff. Uh, I don't know if he's... But who's your buddy? Who's your buddy, Bob? It's, it's Tiago. I think he's in China at the moment. Okay, cool. Um, so it's pop him an email, however you're staying in touch, and tell him this is what you've got to do, and he's got to hold you accountable to doing so. Tiago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Could I ask a extra question, if I may? Of course, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, mate. Um, old numbers that you've got, and for some reason of of that side, or you know, sort of you had some. Um, you never sort of really hooked up, but you maybe met parties, things like that, um, or even ones you have and haven't contacted for a while. Um, particularly sort of around New Year's, where you know everyone sends messages and like, do you have something? You probably don't get in this situation, but do you have um, sort of a text you'd send? Um, so I get back in contact, see if there's anything, or is it? Just you know, just let them slide. I had a brilliant one that I, I used a few years ago, like about four years ago, and it it's because I just forgot who everyone was. I just <laughs> totally forgot. Like, you got you know when you get so many numbers, and it's yeah. like, I only know 10% of the people on my phone. Who is Joanne 7? Who is uh, Joanne 9, 10, and 11? You know, who are these people? Um, so, the good, it's great. New Year's a bloody Christmas Day and New Year's is a bloody great chance to do that because you can say you can just text you know Happy New Year for 2009 didn't get to know you well enough in 2008 how about a drink sometime simple as that that's good mm. simple that's great 
I've got my life um, pretty much sorted now, you know. How, let's see, you know. Oh, I've got work sewn up in 2008. 2009's to party. Fancy a quick drink? You know, anything like that sort of fun thing. Like 2009, a whole new ne year of happiness or something. I'll actually find that actual text. I'll, I'll try and find it wherever it is. And what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll tell you and we'll uh, send it all with the pack that we're going to send out. That'd be great. I'd really like that. But uh, even that that sentence I just told you works great. Yeah, I, I think I, I, it was as simple as that. Nearly, it was as simple as that with a little joke in the middle. You know, like what was your what was the best thing you got for Christmas, or what's your New Year's resolution? Mine is this, and I I said something really funny, you know. No, that that makes sense too, because uh, I got a lot of these, so I could send something. You know, my back, my uh, New Year's resolution know. is to have more random dates, <laughs> to get to know different <laughs> diversity of people, or whatever you want to say, to break down all social taboos. You know, any other little, yeah. little comment you want to do, it doesn't matter. No, that's really good. But if if you had something like that for framework and could send, that'd be awesome. Actually. Yeah, yeah, no, I will. No I will. Appreciate that, man. And it's also good for Valentine's. <laughs> mm. Ah, yeah, especially before that. Uh, that's a good time of the year as well. So, you know, you can rekindle things constantly. Yeah, every three months yeah. just send out a big mass message. I have some on the phone too. I can't remember who the hell it is. I usually put a bit of a, a thing of where I met them and after in it, but... Uh, yeah, but after a while that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be getting too many. Yeah, I, I just... Guys, I just sent out um, a mass text today to, like, nearly every girl in my phone book. I have no idea who 90% of them are. Um, just saying, hey, we're having a pre-Christmas drinks tonight at this club. Come and join me for some drinks. Be good to see you again. And I got texts back from, like, 40 girls going, hey, don't remember who this is. Who are you? You know? Um, and about another 20 going, hey, I'm so glad that you called. Or, you know, didn't think you were going to call me, blah, blah, blah. You know? So there's lots and lots of, uh, you know, responses from people that would have otherwise just been dead numbers. Yeah. Um, there's there's any of those ones that said, um, don't remember who this is, sort of thing. Did you send anything or uh, just leave them? Depended, no, no, I sent something back. Um, I sent back a mass text to most of them, mm. um, saying, I can't, I can't believe you can't remember me, I'm so offended. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. You remember me when you see me, I'll see you tonight, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, but to those who I could remember, um, who they were, I sort of sent a thing saying, I can't believe you don't remember me. How many guys did you dance with on the street, or something like that? And they could take, like, oh, it's you, hey, how are you? <laughs> um, or, alternatively, what I have is I have a lot of the girls, I put them, like, their name and then the club that I meet them at. Yeah, me too. Uh, so I have like 20 Louise G Ghost and 17 like Sarah's, you know, Marita and things like that. And because I know which club I met them at, I go, I can't believe you didn't me remember me. I met you at uh, Marita's only a few months ago. You know, I have no idea how long it is. You know, I have no idea when I met them. All I know is I must have met them at Marita or whatever the club is. Does that make sense? Yeah, um, definitely. And a lot, a lot of the time, right, people just feel socially obligated to remember you. Yeah? Yeah. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, it must have. I remember going to Mavida at some point in the last five years, so I must have met him, you know? Um, and then when they come out, you can just rekindle it again, you know? It's easy enough. And you, you've got something to play with with them. Oh, you don't remember. You're all so upset. I'm so offended, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you've got all these numbers, why not send them a text? What you got to lose? Exactly. Yeah, definitely going to do that. I got a few numbers as well. I can do that as well. That's a really good idea. He, um, also, these days you can send it and like, do you have Facebook? And then you just put your little Facebook address in, so they can find, which is normally your email address, so they can find you exactly. You know, because there might be a lot of people with the same name as you. And then they've got your picture, and you've got, you know, they'll add you if they, if they, you know, if they remember you or they're interested or so on. That's a really good idea too. Yeah, because then you've got their picture and everything when they come up, and you go, ah, oh, it was that girl. Instead of waiting in, and waiting somewhere in a club, uh, thinking, who the shit is it? Who, you know, which, is it that one? That looks familiar. No, it isn't. Is it that one? So you just get them all on Facebook. Yeah, very good. And then you can start Facebook yeah. game and it's cheaper. <laughs> oh, 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 can you just say, if you're on Facebook, add me at the end of the text sort of thing? Yeah. 
P.S. Do you have Facebook? And then put your, uh, Mine's name. yeah. Well, you don't even have to give yours. You just go on Facebook. But you can give yours. It's up to you. There's, you know, there's no wrong or right to it. Mm. We don't have to accept their friendship request anyway. So it turns out to be a minger. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so it's a good little uh, way to check, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Gents, I'm going to have to handle some work in a couple of minutes, but it's been really good advice. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Before you go, did you uh, get... I asked a lot of you a question about, are you an alien or a robot? Yeah, we talked about that in our message, um, and uh, so the consensus was that... Um, Robots follow everyone, you know, follow society, just uh, do what they're programmed to do. Uh, as aliens stand out, they're, they're, they're different, you know, and they, they follow themselves and their own um, own ways of thinking. They're not, uh, you know, they, they stand out because of that. And did, what did everyone else get? I don't know who else is on the same team as you, but that it, or uh, is not on. Maybe is. Is everyone yeah, on the same team? I'm just thinking about that. Aliens are tend to, will be very curious to get to know someone and know about them. Yeah, they're exotic. You know, they're different from everybody else. I don't know why they appear in, but by the way of thinking, so, yeah. Brilliant, guys. Very, very good. Basically, you, 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 that was it. I've put robots... Uh, conform, they tried to fit in to hang out with so-called cool people, they wear the same stylish clothes, blah blah, boring. Uh, aliens are free thinkers, they talk to who they want, when they want, they're spontaneous, adventurous and open-minded. Mm. And take everything as a new experience and learn by it. I know which one I prefer. Well, there you go. <laughs> so what are we guys? Are we robots or aliens? Definitely aliens. There you go. Wait, wait. Yeah, handsome aliens. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. Beat me up, Scotty. I've got a question. Um, I'm going up to Scotland for about a month. Actually, I'm just driving down. I'm, I'm parked at a service station right now. Um, and I'll be there for about a month. I don't really know anyone that I can sort of go out with. The people I know tend to be kind of married and with kids and stuff. So I don't really know anyone I can go out winging with or uh, even any general... Yeah, that's brilliant. That's great news. All right. So I bet you're really comfortable going out with people, other people that can wing you, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I bet you're not so comfortable going out by yourself without anybody. True. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you want to be, comfortable or uncomfortable? Uncomfortable to sort of yeah. push back Why? my comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. This is a brilliant opportunity for you to take your whole game to a whole new level right now. So go out to Scotland for a month where you don't really know anybody that will naturally go out with you. It's to now go out and put your game into real action. Right? Go out there and game guys and girls, create a social circle of people, right? Of people in an area that you've never been to before. In fact, this is the perfect testing ground for all of your techniques, all of your routines and everything that you've been learning so far. Right? <laughs> so this is brilliant. You can go out there now and you can start to game girls by yourself, right? Is it easier to game girls with a wing or by yourself? I find it's easier to, for some reason, it's easier to approach with a wing, but with the gaming, I'm fine with the mid-game stuff I, I'm fine with. But yeah. the, the, the initial yeah. approach, which I, I find I can do much better if, with a wing, even if they're not a wing, they're just somebody there. I don't know why, why that is. Great. Uh, so here's what I do when I'm out by myself, right? Dexter will tell you, right? I am terrible like that. I hate to do cold approaches, right? Um, I hate doing cold approaches, and if I'm going to do cold, I very rarely do do them. But um, on the occasion I'm doing them just to improve my game and to train a little bit, which I do, um, I very often need somebody there to sort of give me a kick up the arse and go and do it, right? Um, but what I do instead, because otherwise I would only game when I had people with me. Well, I would only train my game when I had people with me. So what I do instead is I pretend to be my own coach. Right? I pretend in my head exactly what I would do if I had a coaching client. Right? And exactly what I would say. Right? Um, so I would, um, if I had a coaching client, I would say, right, let's find the first set. There's a set over there. Go, approach. Right? Um, and I would just push them into it. I might give them an approach, you know, an open or whatever to go and use, and I would literally push them into it. So when I'm there, I do the exact same thing. I go, all right, here's your opener. You're going to do a direct opener, whatever it may be. Um, you're so beautiful, I have to stop you say hi. That's my opener. Great. 
So now I look around, I find a set, there's a good set, right, go. And I literally push myself into it, right? The same way that I would do if I had a coach there or if I was the coach of somebody. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Um, but that's all it is. You just need that kick up the arse to get from standing there looking at her going, oh, I should open that, to just walking up to her and opening it. Yeah. One thing that made me really good was when I started in a game 12 years ago, there wasn't any PUAs. There was five of us. And our, our hangout or our lair was the zoo bar. And no one, there was no one really to hang out with because they didn't want to go out every single night. Uh, I did, but they didn't. So I had to literally go out four or five days a week on my own. I had no choice. And I grew to love it. And I always found I got the best results on my own. Because I, I, who's it? Who can you always rely on? You can always rely on yourself. Mm. Yeah. So I always got the best results by myself. I had no one hindering my game. I had no one I had to look after. And a, a good little opener you can always use when you're on your own is, hey, I'm just waiting for my friends. For, for, they'll be here in three minutes. You want to be my new best friends for a while? And that's it. They're like, yeah, cool. They're not going to go no, are they? Very rarely you would get... I don't remember a no, actually. But I'm not saying it doesn't happen. But you just say, hey, I'm just waiting for my friends. I'll be here in a minute. Do you want to be my new best friends until they come? And they're like, yeah, you go, cool, high five, high five. And then just ask them opinion opener or tell them a story or just start chatting generally and feed off hooks. Okay, what about when your friend doesn't arrive? Ah, so, now, if they did say that, well, that's not a problem because... Well, put it this way, they never normally say it. But if they do say it, just go, yeah, he texts me and said he cancelled, but we was having so much fun, I didn't bother to tell you. Yeah? Cool. Simple yeah, as that. Good. But they don't normally mention it. Uh, they, they only, only maybe the girl that's least interested would probably mention it because she wants someone to hook up with now. Yeah. I, I really like that, that's really good. It works no, like a charm. It's also a time constraint. Until yeah. you get your foot in the door. Definitely. Guys, I really appreciate being able to listen in on this one. I've got to go for work, unfortunately. But hey, go and do it, go and do it. We'll speak to you soon. Okay, mate, thanks a lot. Take mate. care. Cheers. Have a good one. Flirt with brilliance. Hey, take care. Gotcha. Actually, I'm going to go as well because I'm going starching and reading in a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for letting me listen in, guys. Um, I try to be a bit more active now. I haven't been out so much because I was a bit, bit busy, but uh, definitely uh, in the new year. That's going to be my new, new year's resolution to uh, keep it up. And keep it up. <laughs> keep it up and yeah. keep it up. Have a good Christmas and New Year. Okay, cool. Yeah, Take care. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really helpful. I mean, I think I have to do a bit of solo charging. But can you give me any other kind of tips, generally, I mean, how, how you would handle it, maybe? What, solo charging? Yeah. In, in what way? To get the courage to do it, or to just, what, what in what way? Uh, well, partly, partly the courage. Is, I mean, I find that sometimes, or often, I see a very hot girl, and I get phased and I won't approach, whereas if she's kind of a mediocre... I know we went through this in the Level 1 seminar about your value being... You have to see yourself with much higher value and create the list. Um, but I guess that's a side sort of issue um, that um, I, I sort of know how I need to get around that. Um, but any other... What about maybe day game? When you started out, when you said, you know, you had to go out on your own... I mainly did night game all them years ago. I did I did a bit of day game around Covent Garden and so on, but that was more, um, you know, the Ross Jeffrey style of. Uh, excuse me, I've got a curious intuition about you. That sort of one, and then you'd you'd you know you'd extract them to a coffee shop, so on, and start talking for a minute. You know, like are you shop are you shopping for someone? And they're like, yeah, I'm just having a look around. You go, great, you've got time for a 10-minute coffee. I know, a great one over here. Follow me. Stick your elbow out. They link on, lead. No hesitation whatsoever. Fluid, fluid. Okay. 
Yeah. Let, let me give you um, let me give you a little um, piece of advice there for this one then. So you're looking for something for day game, are you? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, have you done your Christmas shopping yet? Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done well, your Christmas? Well, I haven't known, and I will be doing it next Good. weekend. Do you have any women to buy anything for? Um, mum, sister, cousin, girlfriend. Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. Great stuff, right? So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go shopping for those women. You're gonna go to shops where it's predominantly women, like chop shops, things like that, right? And you are gonna ask them advice, right, on what to buy. <laughs> because women know more about us, about women's presence than guys do, right? Absolutely, yeah. Right? And that's all you're gonna do, by the way. Just go and ask their advice to get them to help you find some uh, presents. And it's very possible that as you do that, you might like develop into a conversation with them and, you know, might get to build a little bit of comfort and rapport. And as you do so, you know, you might decide, hey, should we like exchange numbers and meet up another time? That might happen, right? Um, all you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to find, uh, you're going to go shopping for these females in your life for Christmas and you're going to find some other females that are going to help you and give you some advice. Yeah. The shop assistants don't count. Okay. Yeah, just off and here's what I did this on Monday, right? And I walked into shop shop and I just like used one of my cousins and I thought, all right, let me pretend I'm getting, or let me get a present for her and let me ask some girls advice. And I was in top shop and at one point it dawned on me as I, say, I, I like closed some girl and got her number and she was leaving. She was really nice and we had a great time. She showed me some lovely tops and bits and pieces. Um, and as she walked away, oh, okay, let me approach someone else. So I looked around and there were about 60 people in the shop. And what dawned on me was I was the only guy in there. Right? I was the only guy in six out of 60 people. Right? Mm -hmm. These shops are filled right now with women. They're filled with women that love shopping, and they're filled with women that love shopping and will be able to help you to get your Christmas presents for them, for the girls in your life, right? Mm -hmm. And that just gives you so many natural hooks and conversations um, off of it, and it's so um, easy and low key, low pressure for both you and for them. Mm. I've used a kind of a shopping opener um, before, um, but. It's that transition to building that comfort and making that conversation. I, I used to shop me over and as I was leaving, I just turned around to the old David D thing, do you have email and put your number down there and got her number. And then when I text, texted her later, she said, look, sorry, I shouldn't have given you my number. I was just being polite. Cool. You know, it's only one. Yeah. So the, um, and do you know what? Sometimes I get that. Who cares? All right. Um, you, you go and ask 10 women a day for the next seven days. Um, to help you with the shopping, right? And you can do that in a couple of hours a day easily, right? You'll probably get 50 of their numbers and maybe 10 of them you'll go out on dates with. Great. Um, here's, here's the clothes that I'm using at the moment just because it's really easy and it's true is, uh, you know, over the next couple of weeks me and my mates are having a few Christmas parties. You should come with some of your friends. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Right? And then I just invite them down to one of the parties that we're having. Okay. And if you're not, low party, party, yeah. if you're not having any parties, then just... Uh, just yeah, we usually not. Um, if you're not having a parties, you can do uh, one of the few things. You can still use that clothes, right? And then use Dexter's um, marshmallow text. You got the marshmallow text? I've got the marshmallow. Is it roasted marshmallow or toasted marshmallow? No, that makes me think that, but roasted. Okay. Um, and if they don't respond to that, the first one. Do you go on to the next one? Uh, no, if they don't respond to that. Um, but well, the thing is, we've got, we've got, we've got an e-book. You could say it's just, yeah. We've got an e-book which outlines step-by-step -step guidelines. And mm -hmm. we, we wanted to cover something new instead of text game because we did that all at the last phone call conference. So, um, but w w I mean, there'll be more on that on level two. Really, we sort of, sort of, we step up the game a hell of a lot on level two. Level one's very basic for us, and it's a short, quick s intro to what we do. Really, that's what level one's all about. But let me just come back quickly to the sergeant in the daytime and sergeant in shops. Now, okay. you can actually, it it is allowed to sarge or ask opinion of a girl that works there if 
you go for the number close. And only if. Because there's no okay. point. What well, Everyone asks yeah. her there uh, for something, but no one, and hardly anyone ever asks for a number. Now, you need to find... Uh, what I find is when I'm asking something about shoes, I'll do a little shoe opener that I've got. So I'll say something along the lines of, hey, do you, I, I, I'll explain this more on a deeper level and uh, level two, but hey... I was watching a documentary with my friend Candy the other day and it said women that wear open toe shoes are more open minded and friendly but women that wear closed toe shoes are more to the point and direct with what they want what do you think? Yeah, and that's to the girl that works there. You can also do it to people that are just in the shop. And she'll give her opinions. And then you notice something about her. You go, hey, like, for example, I remember many, many years ago, there was this uh, one girl, and she had really awesome nails. And I just said, hey, your nails are awesome. Did you do them yourself? And she's like, yeah, I did, actually. Da, da, da. I said, wow, is that what you're doing as a part-time job or, like, when you're not working here? And she's like, giggles, go, no, no, it's just a hobby. I said, hobby, you should make that a career. I know a girl that would love to do you to do her nails like that. Actually, I know quite a few. And she's like, yeah, really? And we had a little chat, da, da, da. And then she goes, can, can we keep moving around and pretend I'm showing you stuff so we can talk longer? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So we go around. I said, listen... Um, why don't you give me your number and we'll go for a drink because I, I don't want to stop you from your work and she said oh I can't I can't I can't so most guys would think she's like I can't I'm at work most guys would think oh well that's, that's a defeat I said to her well what you have to do then is you go downstairs and you write on a little paper, piece of paper you come upstairs and you give me it so she went downstairs written on a little piece of paper come and gave me it simple as that so not always, it's not always that they don't want to, it's just sometimes it's it's not the right time or the right place. Yeah, I can completely relate to that because I, I did try with a shop assistant just on Ox Oxford Street and, um, and we had probably a seven, eight minute conversation. But when I, when I asked for the number, her boss was just like really close. It's just a small shop. And so she's kind of declined it declined to give it to me at that point. She said, if you want to see me, you can always come back here. I, I, I just took that as a bit of a blowout. But, um, yeah, but there you go. It's not always a blowout. That one was so, so positive. You know, she was giving lots of IOIs. Body language doesn't lie, my friend. So what you need to do is basically just go, okay, just let me know when you finish. We'll go for a quick coffee or I, I'll slip you my number or so on. Yeah? Okay. Simple as that. Another thing I find is sometimes if you get Facebook, um, somebody will will um, give you their Facebook, they'll add you as a friend, but then they don't reply to your message. I mean, what's that all about? Do they just want, are they just looking for Facebook fans, or could that be because my It could be a million and twenty different things. It could be a million and twenty different things. It's how long is a piece of string? It's like, you, no one knows why. Because um, Facebook's very random thing. It, it, it has no real rules. <laughs> uh, it could be they're just promoters. You know, it could be they're just trying to create groups and add loads of people to a group once they make friends with them. Uh, it could be that since then they've got a boyfriend they don't want to reply to men. It could be, you could be you're just in the same group for liking Porsches and they just added you and then realised they didn't want to have a chat or they just didn't want to chat at that time and then forgot about you and your mail got lost in their inbox. You know? Could be a million different things. Um, I think we're going to round up now. Okay. Because we've literally got two minutes left. Um, what I was going to say, are you, by the way, are you on the LSS? I am, yeah. Okay. We are doing another level one boot camp on Saturday. And a lot of people okay. have been asking us about reviews. We haven't, we haven't, there's been no reviews to let people know how the last one went, so they're a bit reluctant to know whether to go on it or not, and we don't really want to blow our own trumpets, but we also want an honest, honest uh, review, so you were the pioneers, you were the very first to come on it, okay. so it, it'd, be, it'd be nice if one of you guys could write up. I meant I should have said it when the other two were here because we were t uh, they were I was texting them about it and they were like quite happy but I didn't say I didn't tell them that it was this Saturday. Um, right. Would you would you be okay to do a review? 
Yeah, I can, I can write up a review for that because I actually thought it was very, very good um, and very good value. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's nice to hear that we're going to get a nice review then. <laughs> um, but yeah, be totally honest and we'll leave you with one more question if you want to ask something else. Um, I can't think of anything else at the moment. Um, that means we've done a good job, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just one thing, just one thing. Yeah. Okay. I had to go to kind of penciled in for a Thursday then that day I, I sent her a text or something to confirm she didn't confirm back so I ignored it and then um, she called me like out of the blue about a week later I, I didn't pick up the phone you know I just couldn't be bothered with somebody who's, who's kind of plays games Yeah. and uh, we've been going on and off occasional text occasional phone calls for a few months now so I mean what, what do you advise is it worth me calling her again laying down the, the law sort of thing or just look for someone else so she's been yeah. what mess, uh, messing about and not t uh... no, no, she's kind of she's flaky basically she's very flaky like um, you know I might call she might not answer uh, next she may not answer then a week later she'll call or she'll send I'd explain to her that your time is precious and that you're mm. quite busy um, you're going to be here at a certain time for a coffee after work or a cocktail after work she's welcome to join but after that really you don't see any point in carrying on because you're both too busy you know something something along the lines of a deadline it will show you your importance because otherwise it's just going to seem needless